I'm Phil Bolton with the Global Atlanta News Service, and today I'm with Red Turner, the uh, soon-to-be winner of the International Heroes Award from the World Chamber of Commerce in Atlanta. Congratulations, Red. Thank you. Tell us about your company, Red Sky Productions. Well, I've had this company around for 10 years and traveled around the world doing inter documentaries, international documentaries, uh, things like that. Uh, first thing that I worked on was Pollinators in Peril, but more recently what I'm really pushing and working hard on is a documentary called Water War, which is about the tri-state water dispute for the last 20 years between uh, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. And another, another thing that I've been working on is a documentary um, for a friend of mine, uh, Gary Stryker, working with the Carter Center on a uh, documentary titled uh, Fiery Serpent, Foul Water, which is about the guinea worm uh, eradication program in the world that President Carter has set up over 20 years ago. And now they're coming close to the last few years of getting rid of guinea worm. Very incredible documentary um, that's be coming out uh, later this year, early next year. How do you decide what the topics are that interest you um, for, for a documentary? It's a process. Of, uh, Gary Stryker has hired me to do these things. That's, that's, that's a particular hire to, to uh, be one of the photographers on, on his documentaries. Uh, so that's not being chosen. Now, Water War was something that we've chosen out of my own ideas. and. We have friends, we sit there and talk about what the idea is. We meet with uh, the local broadcasters, see that who's going to be a part of it, see what they like, and it, it's just a, it's a uh, collaboration to come up with an idea. Do you he hope that um, this documentary will have some impact on, on this impasse between the states and the issues that they're squabbling over? Well, Water War is going to be a road, basically a road map for uh, government officials and local um, municipalities in the three states to know what the issues are. Something they haven't laid out, what are the problems? Is, you know, is there's a big problem when there's not enough water? Now, what, what, are, what are the three states doing to either alleviate water problems, either to conserve problems? So what we've done is we've found out going from Lake Lanier, uh, above Lake Lanier, going from Lake Lanier down to South Georgia and, and Florida and seeing the whole area and saying, oh, well, th these are the issues. These are the people that need water, and why is it so important? So will it help out? Yes. And uh, the nice thing about this particular project, it'll be done during election year, and so it will be a top of mind project. Have you thought about how this impasse should be resolved? Well, the best way to resolve this impasse is, is conservation and knowing what, you know, how, how to conserve water so in, in better use and reuse. So those are the three things that what, what, what a lot of what we're, what we're doing and what everything is working out. But it, what it does, it takes time. We have to know the problem. Then we have to work on solving the problem. There's places in the country that are a lot drier that have figured out how to do it. And we have to think the same ways that the other place countries that has less water. Where have you been most uh, proud of your achievements as a documentary filmist? Just getting the opportunity to be out there and be privileged to see history happen, honestly, is to be with when President Carter goes to sit there and talk to a village and visit with a village uh, elder. And to be a part of history is something that's really, really interesting that really makes me feel like, like important. And then to know that like people, who've, people who have seen a little bit of the guinea worm trailer that's, been, that's out on the web right now, to know that people see it and they go, what can I do to help President Carter um, alleviate this? People are already, and it hasn't even come out yet. And so that makes me feel good to be a part of history. 
and you can uh, play an active role in getting people to recognize problems. Well, it's not, it's not an active role. When you're, when, you're, when you're out filming, you are there being an impartial observer. Now, the camera, cameras in sight and make things happen, or lots of things happen when, when a camera is there. But what you're there is you're just to be an observer and help uh, m make a story and be there and, and, and observe. So when you're doing it, and, and, you, and a lot of times see a lot of, a lot of difficult things, and you still have to work through that. You see pain of children and people, uh, things, you know, people just, it's a whole different thing looking on a television screen than it is observing it through, through a camera and, and being there. But you still have to work and, and make sure that you get everything on, on the videotape and, and so people can see it later. Do you think that documentaries play an important part in making people smarter? Well, I think that it basically people won't know, don't, will not know about what's going in on on Ghana or Uganda with uh, river blindness if, if someone doesn't go out and do a story and, and let them know that's happening. So yes, and it, it, helps, it helps out. But it doesn't solve the problem of people not going and seeing it. As a child, did you... Um work with the cameras? Were you um, grown, growing up around the cameras and CNN? I did a little bit of pictures. I, what, what I really, um, really got going on with camera stuff was I, I was really fortunate. I, Dad being Ted Turner, one of the interesting things that happened was that things that he would do, he'd bring every documentary that he had coming down the pipe, World at War, everything and he would have us watch it as a child but he also one of the big things that he got was he got Jacques Cousteau after Jacques Cousteau was dropped by public broadcasting he got it on Turner Broadcasting and he asked uh, Captain Cousteau what uh, what would you like to do for your first documentary for for Turner Broadcasting he says Ted I'd like to go down the Amazon River and do a, whatever that was and then Immediately after that, which I grew up watching every Jacques Cousteau thing, my brother and I were like, wow, this is great. Um, he comes immediately to us and says, hey, would you like to go down in, on the Calypso on the Amazon? And we go, yeah. <laughs> and so that you know, was, it was a childhood dream you know, as a young teenager to see Falco, see all those guys that I just watched and you know, knew all their names, but to get and shake their hands and be on the boat, see these cameras. But, Really, I got uh, interested in, in 1990, started working for, I worked, started working at CNN in 1989, but in 1990, um, I was working in the Tokyo Bureau there, and I was an editor and editor and sound technician and going out in the field and saw the guys working with the cameras. I thought, wow, that's really cool, and learned a lot doing that, and I, I traveled to uh, Russia and Iraq and, um, saw my stories and worked in Jordan during the Gulf War and I was editing the stories after going out and being a sound technician editing the stories and then basically when when it was done editing the story see the story um, get satellite out and then only moments later being played back and I'm like wow this is really cool seeing instant gratification of, of the day's work and in the evening and then and then go to bed knowing that the next day was going to be the same type of uh, intensity to to get these stories out and that's where I got the bug of one loving the travel and and two wanting to be a part of part of it